I'm going to be reading one page for every time I picked up my phone last week. <laughs> I'm having a crisis and I don't know what to do. I want to succeed just one day. You're about to see an epic hair transformation. Reading about people solving puzzles isn't interesting. I won't go out of my way to read any more, but somehow expect more books to have been read. So it is the first full week of the Magical Readathon, which is my favourite readathon of all time. It's the Autumn Equinox edition. And as a bonus for progress in the Spring edition, there were three extra days tacked on to the beginning of this round that I haven't actually been able to take advantage of, the first two days at least, because I was focusing on finishing my current, or some of my currently reading before the end of July. So it is the 31st of July today, um, but the Magical Readathon has commenced. And I I do really want to read a lot in August. One, because it's the Magical Readathon and I want to hit all of those prompts. I'm aiming to do my career and also some of like the extracurricular bits, but also because I just really want to read a lot in August. I didn't read a ton in July. I read chunky books, so I read quite a few pages, but not too many books. And I'm just in a really big reading mood. So I thought, why not do a challenge vlog? Why not add a challenge element to this to push me to read even more? So this is a little bit of a variation on the screen time challenge. You'll have seen it before where bookish creators swap their screen time for reading time in an effort to put down their phone and pick up their book. And that's a really cool challenge idea. It's one that I haven't done and one that I would maybe consider doing in the future. But I've always been aware that screen time exists, okay? I was a Samsung user for a decade up until this March where I switched to an iPhone just with me having like Apple computers for YouTube. It just didn't make sense to me to have a Samsung anymore. And until I had an iPhone, I actually had no idea that it tracks the amount of times that you pick your phone up in a day which is terrifying. And what is even more terrifying is that I am typically picking my phone up around 200 times a day. I don't know if this is normal because I don't know what other people's phone usage is. I don't know what your pickup rate is. I don't wanna scare you, but if you feel comfortable doing it, in the comments, please drop your average amount of phone pickups for the last week. Let me know, because I think that this is super excessive. And like, I do work from home, I'm self-employed. I use my phone for like social media, which is tied to my income. I use it to watch YouTube. Over the last week or so, I've been in a procrastination slump, so I've been playing a lot of Candy Crush. So I'm picking up my phone a lot, and I don't have anybody to tell me not to pick up my phone like throughout working hours as well self-employed, I can pick up my phone whenever I want. So in this vlog, I'm going to be reading one page for every time I picked up my phone last week. And we're gonna do this day by day. I have screenshots of every day of last week's usage. And the goal is to match that in page count. And this is gonna be challenging for me because we're gonna be starting with Monday. Of course, it's Monday today. And last Monday, I picked up my phone 226 times. That's a lot. That wasn't the worst day as well. It was one of the worst days, but one day in the week does beat that. So the aim for the day is to read 226 pages. So I'm going to be doing this across multiple books because while I'm eager to get into my magical readathon TBR, I am also currently reading a book from July, which is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. As you guys know, I am a co-host of The Wheel of Time Along and the live show for this book is going to be this Saturday. And the only way that I can make it through Wheel of Time, especially with books that are 970 pages is to split them down into chunks. So from now until Saturday, I have to read 60-ish pages a day of this to have it done in time for the live show. So my plan is every day to read my 60 pages of this and then to read the remainder in another book, which um, I will decide, I guess, what my next book is gonna be when I've read my 60 page section of this one. But as I'm sure you guys know at this point, Wheel of Time is a big, epic, classic high fantasy series. It's like 16 books long and it follows a very classic fantasy struggle between light and dark that takes place over ages. So every turn of the Wheel of Time is an age and in every age the world has been turned in towards the dark. In every age we also have a pivotal figure called the Dragon Reborn who is reincarnated time and time again and he is kind of the pawn for dark and light. There are many prophecies, some say that he will like remake the world, 
some say that he will once again break the world and in this series we are following this Aegis Dragon Reborn and a handful of side characters who are Tarverin. Now Tarverin are not the Dragon Reborn but they are people who also have the ability to influence the weave and the pattern of the world which is I guess the series of events that happen in each age. It is very complex, it is a very detailed expansive world and the pacing is super super slow so I have been reading this I think since the 19th of July and I'm 634 pages into it. I have read a little bit today and my page aim for the day when I can put this down is 673 and I'm currently reading this book is going to add an extra element of difficulty to this challenge because it's slow and it takes me longer than normal <laughs> to read 60 pages of this than it would 60 pages of a different book. But at the same time, I have been feeling a little bit slumpy for various reasons recently. And this book is not responsible for that. But when I'm feeling slumpy in other ways, having to get through 60 pages of this before I can even think of moving on to something else when this takes me a little bit longer is contributing to that general slumpy feeling that I've been having. So I do feel like this challenge is gonna push me because not only do I have to read this, today I have to then read like 200 pages of a different book. So my plans for today have been a little bit derailed. I've already had a little hiccup in my day. I thought I had a nail appointment at 9 a.m. but it's actually 10.30 so I've come home I have to go back out again in an hour. I was planning to do sprints with my patrons today, but now with my nail appointment being a little bit later, I think I'll just push it to another day. So I don't know. I don't know what my plan is for today, but I do want to get through this, like this section sharpish, um, so that I can spend the rest of my day focusing on a second book for Magical Readathon. And when it comes time to pick that book, I'll check in and let you know what it is. <laughs> So I did indeed go get my nails did and I've done some work and I've read my daily section of The Shadow Rising, which is just behind me. So I've now decided that my first magical readathon book is going to be Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. The main reason for this is because Goldsboro have started processing my order of Lightbringer and I can't read Lightbringer until I've read this because this is the first demonology prompt and Lightbringer's in for the second one and you kind of have to complete them in order. I've done it before where I've like done them out of order with the intention of like coming back and filling them in and it never works out in my favor so I'm just gonna do it the, the right way this time but this one was for the prompt to read the first book that you see on Goodreads or Instagram and you can go check out my TBR if you missed it to like see me picking this one. This one is the Fairy Loot edition it was part of the adult subscription and I've actually heard really really good things about this. I don't know too much about it I think it has cozy fantasy vibes it's set in like the 1900s and it's following a woman who was trying to put together the first ever encyclopedia of fairies and she goes to this like small town or village to like help her with her work and I think she encounters her academic rival who has the cutest name. He's called Wendell? Yeah, Wendell Bumblebee. Can you believe it? This one is super short as well. I can't remember the last time that I read a 300 page book. So I am expecting it to be like pretty speedy reading, especially in comparison to like Wheel of Time. But I've read my daily section of The Shadow Rising today it was 66 pages, which means to meet <laughs> the pickup goal for today. I need to read 160 pages of this which is a little bit intimidating because that's like half of the book. Can't promise I'm going to be able to do it but I'm going to give it my best shot and I'm going to get started on it right now. did fail my page goal yesterday which honestly isn't all that surprising. I did expect that the days where I had to read over 200 pages a day especially weekdays were going to be a little bit of a struggle so it's yesterday tomorrow and Thursday that are the main problems with this week. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do about those pages that I didn't read yet. I only fell short by 30 pages which honestly I don't think is too bad. So my options are to roll them over to today 
and I do have a lower page count that I'm dealing with today. I could also work at like an average across the week, which the goal then would be 198 pages a day. And yesterday I did actually manage to read 199, which is pretty impressive for me for a Monday. And then the third option would be to kind of bank any excess pages and kind of deal with them at the end of the week. I do have a comic on my Magical Readathon TBR that's kind of on reserve right now. Obviously it will only take me like 90 minutes to read it, if that. So I don't want to pull it out just for the sake of it because I feel like that is against what I'm trying to do here. But it is there if I need it. So I haven't decided which of those routes I'm going to take now. I think I'm just going to see how today goes. And if I can add those extra 30 pages onto today's count, then I will do so. But today's page goal is 169 pages. And I have already made a little bit of a dent in that. I've read a tiny bit of The Shadow Rising. I'm on page 680. And I have to say, since I've started Emily Ward's Encyclopedia for Fairies, it was such a drag having to pick this up this morning because this is just so much faster, so much more engaging and just a nice refreshing break from something like The Shadow Rising, but needs must. I think my issue with this right now is that I'm on page 680 and I still have five days of reading this to go. Like I've been reading this for so long. I've been reading this every single day and I still have 300 pages, truly wild. But in terms of Emily Wilde, cause I'm not giving you regular updates on Wheel of Time. Cause like I said, we've been reading her a long, long time. But Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies is reminding me a lot of An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson, which is a book that was released in like 2018 that disappointed a lot of people that I really, really enjoyed. So this one is following a woman called Emily Wilde who goes to this island that's like off the coast of Norway to research the fair folk that that live there because they have been previously uncatalogued. And she has been working on an encyclopedia of fairies for like the last 10 years or so. And she means it to be like a defining work within her topic of study. So she's there for a few days. She doesn't do very well with people. And so she isn't really getting on with the locals or making much like headway with them. But her academic rival, Wendell Bumblebee turns up and he is this enigmatic flamboyant guy that has the locals wrapped around his fingers in no time. And the reason why he's turned up is because he would like to help Emily categorize these fairies to take them to this conference where they can kind of share the renown for discovering these previously like uncatalogued fae. There is more of a plot inside of this like where I'm up to which is just over the halfway point. They are kind of like embarking on something that will have like a definitive end I want to say but because that's only kind of introduced at around the halfway point I don't really want to mention it. It has very cozy fantasy vibes. I like the contrast that we have between Emily who's like super serious and focused on her work and she gets up early to get out into the field and Wendell who's much more carefree and easygoing. He gets up when he wants to, he gets his work done when he wants to, he spends a lot of time socializing and I really like the friction this causes between them when they're interacting and the kind of like humor that comes from it. The writing style took me 50 pages or so to get into just because it is quite historical but it really puts me in the mind of like a movie the kinds that were like popular in the 90s that were children's movies they were often like straight to tv and they would be telling a story of children in the 1900s and you'd have somebody narrating over the top of it it very much feels like that to me with the setting but also the way that this is structured it's like emily's diary like i, I think it's like her field notes so we have that element of like she is narrating her day-to-day -day activities with Wendell alongside her. There are a few little surprises in here as well that aren't mentioned in the synopsis, which I feel like are kind of predictable, but this is the kind of book where you're just like along for the ride, you're here for the vibes. And it is a fun read so far, and we all know that I don't like fun books, but this is not fun in the way that I don't like. It is giving all of those Enchantment of Ravens vibes, which I always describe as like, go into that book knowing it's mainly about the journey, it's mainly about the interaction between the characters than the plot. Like there's so much more plot you could have put in that world but the book wasn't about that and I feel that this is very much the same so I'm enjoying it. If I was to rate this right now I'm not really sure where my rating would sit because while I'm thoroughly enjoying it I'm not like this isn't the best new thing that I've ever read you know so I'm sitting currently at around a three or a four star and that's a three not because I'm ambivalent about it 
just because I'm enjoying it fine but it's kind of like not blowing me away but I am having a really good time while I'm reading it. So I'm about to film my wrap up and then I'm going to get that edited and then I'm going to hop back over to some vlog editing for last week's vlog and as usual while I'm doing that I will dip in and out of a couple of books. I do that mainly to one cut up the monotony of vlog editing because I normally have about two hours of footage so it's a long process if you're literally just doing that but also I struggle to do anything for long periods of time especially when it's reading like I can get quite restless so something that I do to help me read a little bit more throughout the day and also make my editing a little bit more enjoyable when I do have like two hours of footage is I edit a day of footage and then read a chapter of my book because then I'm progressing with two things at once and it really breaks it up for me and neither of them feel tedious and I enjoy doing both of them more than I would if I sat down for three hours now and tried to edit and then sat down for three hours later and tried to read. having a crisis and I don't know what to do. This just turned up and if you know, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, you're about to find out. It's my most anticipated release of the year and it's late. It's like it was released on the 25th of July and I knew it was going to be late because I ordered the signed first edition from Goldsboro and I put it on my magical readathon TBR. I'm desperate to read it, etc, etc. But also I was kind of happy when it wasn't here because when it wasn't here, I didn't have to read it. And if I don't have to read it, then I don't have to face it. And if I don't face it, then I don't have to be in any pain. But now it's here. So now what do I do? Oh my God, it has a spread edge, which I didn't know when I ordered this. I thought it was just signed and numbered. But the book in question is of course Lightbringer by P.S. Brown, which is book six in the Red Rising series. It's 678 pages. I do this really annoying thing when my most anticipated releases arrive. I kind of just sit and stare at them a bit and I'm a little bit scared of them. And I'm definitely scared of this. Like I am definitely not ready to read this book, but I am just about to start Patreon sprints and I haven't read a page today. I made the page goal for yesterday minus eight pages which is really annoying but it was just it was 12 30 and i just could not stay awake any longer so we rolled eight pages over to whenever i pick up those excess pages and today the goal is 227 but because i was up reading so late last night and i really need like a full night's sleep because if not my mental health just crumbles so i slept in a little bit later meaning that i didn't have like my usual reading time so i haven't read a single page yet today so i need to read my daily section of the shadow rising and then my plan is to finish Emily Ward's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I'm on page 234. So I have about 80 pages left of that. And then I'll have about 90 pages to read in a new book. Is that book gonna be Lightbringer? I'm really scared. Actually, at least I just charged up my headphones this morning because um, I will be listening to the, oh my God. I will be listening to the audio alongside reading this, but this is number 331 out of 500. I didn't realize there was only 500 copies of this. I kind of wish I had the rest, but I know that that's just like not a dream that I can fulfill. I would be paying a lot of money to get the rest of the books in this series in the Goldsboro edition. Maybe it's worth it though. That's something that I'm definitely gonna look into, but um, yeah, my sprints are starting very, very soon in eight minutes. So I do need to get set up but I will let you guys know obviously my full thoughts on Emily Wilde when I finish it and let you know what I'm moving on to whether it is Lightbringer or not because the other worry with this not only do I have the anticipation and then also the fear my other worry is that this is going to put me in a reading slump and after setting myself up for success for this month. I don't know if I want to do Lightbringer right now because that's just setting me up for failure. <laughs> so I am about to crack out a 30 minute pop ride with Cody Rigsby, shower and get ready for Buffy with my patrons. But before I did that, I wanted to let you guys know that I did indeed finish Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies shortly after my sprints concluded. And I ended up giving this one three stars. Can I, can you balance here? Why does it have to tilt forward? If it didn't tilt forward, there wouldn't be an issue. But I really did enjoy this. I really liked the writing style. I think the humor 
was my favourite part of it. I also thought that it was pretty atmospheric and it had a very like whimsical fairy tale-esque nature to it. And as well as the story in here, which is of course Wendell and Emily cataloging fairies on this island for the encyclopedia, there's also old like fairy tales from various parts of the world scattered throughout here as well. I really felt that the narrative or like the Emily's voice felt very authentic and it really helped to like immerse me in the story that was being told. The reason why it's a three, and I need to be, I feel more willing to give three stars to books that I actually like, because <laughs> you will find that I tend to give three stars to books that I don't think are terrible, but I didn't really like very much, or the forgettable, or I'm very ambivalent about them. And I, I, I'm none of these things about this book. I thought that it was good, I really enjoyed it, but I never felt myself like fully immersed in this story and that's why I feel like it's a three star because I really enjoyed it and I do think that it was good but it's not going to stick with me in a way where I'll think oh my god remember Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies I really enjoyed reading that book but it was definitely an enjoyable time while I was going through it. So this is the start of a series I don't know how many books it's going to be but something else that I need to be quite honest about going forward and not even honest as in like I'm lying to you guys but honest with myself and having realistic expectations. I don't think I'm going to be continuing this series because it was like I said it was a good time while I was reading it but I have no desire to kind of read anything else from this world. I do think as well that if you are a fan of An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson that you will have a really good time with this and I loved that book. Obviously I read it like five years ago so maybe if I read it now I wouldn't love it as much but I feel like the story is very much in the same vein as that one and they both have very similar atmospheres and they both portray the fae through the more like folkloric trickster elemental kind of lens. So that is my first book down for Magical Readathon which is, is it the O prompt that comes first for demonology? The prompt being to read the first book that you see on Goodreads is the social media that I chose and on my dilemma I have made a decision and literally one thing made this decision for me which may seem kind of trivial and I guess it kind of is but tomorrow morning I have a hair appointment at 9 30 and even though I don't actually typically read very much at my appointments I always take a book with me and I'm not gonna take Wheel of Time because I'm not gonna read it am I? It's far too big, it's far too dense and in the same vein I'm also not gonna take Lightbringer so I don't want to be starting a third book, I don't want to be picking up a book exclusively to take to my appointment with me, which means that the next book that I am going to be picking up is Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This one is one that I picked specifically to fit a difficult prompt, it's not one that's generally on my TBR for this month, and one thing that I really don't want to happen is I don't want to read Lightbringer and it put me in a slump and then me be very reluctant to pick up this, which was kind of like almost a throwaway book that was added to my TBR. I purely picked this out of the options that would fulfil the prompt because it would be the easiest read out of them as well. So my plan is to read this and then start like Bringer hopefully at the weekend. But this one fulfills the prompt I think is for elemental studies. I only need the first prompt for that subject and the prompt is to read a book with earth in the title. I have read the first book of the other Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner series which is it like This Shattered World. I don't have my glasses on so I can't see my books but they are very much in the same vein as the books that Amy Kaufman writes with Jay Kristoff which I really love where they're just like really fun fast-paced sci-fi stories with not Normally with a little bit of romance in there. I feel like Hebe Kaufman's very good at delivering kind of like those high stakes moments of emotion that kind of get you a little bit invested in a story. This one in terms of plot all I know is that Earth intercepts a message from an extinct alien race that leads them to, is it Gaia? Which is a planet which will potentially contain this alien race's advanced technology that can erase the effects of climate change. So in terms of today's page goal I have 85 pages left to meet my goal and um, obviously I am going to work out and watch Buffy now but I'll read like a couple of pages in between hopefully finish off the section in bed. I want to succeed just one day I mean I only missed the mark by seven pages yesterday but I was cutting it to the wire if I'd have got my shit together after dinner yesterday I would have completed my section so fingers crossed I actually manage it today. This is the biggest day as well like this like today has the highest page count so if I can do today I can do any Good morning guys. It is 9am and I am about to head out to my hair appointment. You are about to see an epic hair transformation so wave goodbye to the red. I'm sad to see it go. I just look how good it looks. <laughs> but I just really want to change. I get really bored of hair quickly and because I go 
to have my hair maintained like so regularly I feel like every so often like I need to have a drastic change so I mean the red can always come back because it dies over my natural color real well this is my natural color so yeah we're trying something new and we'll see how it works out I am leaving a little bit early my appointments at 9 30 so I'd normally leave at like 9 15 9 20 because it's not that far but I want to hit a few charity shops along the way to see if I can score any books in the discovery of witches series which I know is a long shot I feel like I see those books all the time but if I go out specifically looking for them I'm not gonna have any luck but there is a bookstore right next to the salon as well that might have some of the books so my plan is to hit all of the charity shops or some of the charity shops on the way down that have like the best book selections and and if there's no luck after my appointment, I'll go to the bookstore and see if they've got anything there. So wish me luck. A little bit nervous for the drastic hair change, but I've been thinking about this since like February. I was going to have it done in like February and change my mind. So I feel like it's finally time going into autumn. We're going to, we're going to spruce it up a little bit. I'm back with a brand new look and I really love it. As you guys know, this morning I was super nervous about having it changed from the red, worried that like, because I love the red so much that I wouldn't love having such a drastic change, but I think it turned out really well. We are gonna be doing a second round of lightning a little bit later in the month when I'm booked in for my keratin treatment, which we kind of, I knew that it was likely I would need a second round of lightning just to get it like a, a white blonde almost but for the first session from my natural color for most of this apart from like the ends because I haven't actually had it lightened in a while I think it turned out really really well this side especially I think lightened really nicely but I did can you believe <laughs> that I actually succeeded in finding Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness can you believe that I actually did that I was shooketh because it's one of like I will see this book all the time and then on the one day that I want to buy it, it will be nowhere. And this is the only one that I found. I didn't find any books in the series. On the way back from the salon, I did go to the bookshop as well after I'd already found this and they had nothing. But I managed to find like one copy of it, which is wild. So I am really glad that I've got this because that means that I can continue on with the series soon because I loved A Discovery of Witches and I was, I was determined to get this second hand. So I know if I hadn't have been able to find it, I would have just pretty much continued to search for it until I did and that obviously would delay me continuing the series. Not that I have any plans to continue the series right now because you know my TBR is bigger than my life goals always but I also hit a couple of charity shops on the way back that weren't open like they open at 9 30 10 and um, so they weren't open on the way down so on the way back I picked up Heartbones by Colleen Hoover which is a Colleen Hoover book that I don't have. I don't actually know what this is about but you know that I love Colleen Hoover books because they're so dramatic, angsty and wildly unrealistic that I just have a grand old time while reading them. So this is one that was released it wasn't released too long ago I think it was only a couple of years ago but with the popularity of Colleen Hoover in the UK it has been re-released is this a 2023 re-release actually it is so this is super recent because I've seen this in Waterstones and was like I'm not gonna buy it yet because I have a couple of Colleen Hoover's I haven't read but two pound for a 2023 hardback how, who am I to resist I also picked up some stuff for dinner um because Curtis is out tonight he's gone for dinner at his mum's um and I think he's like stopping by to see his dad as well so I went to the butcher's and the um, green grocers vegetable shop I can't what's the official term it's the green grocers right to get um, a sweet potato and I got a chicken breast that's stuffed with brie and then wrapped in bacon I love the butchers yummy so yeah I'm gonna have that and sweet potato fries for dinner but until then I have 90 minutes I haven't read anything I didn't even get my book out of my bag when I was getting my hair done and I was there from 9 30 to 1.45, I think. <laughs> so it was it was a long old time and I didn't get my book out once, but now I'm gonna edit some more of last week's vlog because the editing on this needs to be done. I think I only have three days on it left to edit anyway, so I'm, I'm nearly there. And I'm also gonna read some of Wheel of Time with Curtis being out tonight. I'm pretty much gonna eat. Um, I might start Heartstopper because Heartstopper season two has just come out today. And then I'm gonna work out and just settle down and get some reading done. I haven't given you any 
numbers of like today's goals or let you know how I did yesterday. I was very optimistic yesterday, but ultimately I failed by the worst amount today. I failed by like 50 pages. So they're now added to the total. I think we're on like 87 pages or something that I currently need to roll over and fit in at some point. But today is very concerning because it is 10 p.m. and I have just finished today's section of The Shadow Rising and I actually cut it like five pages short because I simply cannot any longer. So my current page count is like 65 pages. I haven't read anything from Unearthed yet today and today's page goal is 219 pages and I... I, failure or success was not necessarily the point of this vlog. The point of this vlog was to stop me from picking up my phone every like because I think if I'm picking up my phone like 230 times a day assuming that I'm up for like 12 hours I'm picking my phone up like once every three minutes and I don't even know what class is as a pickup because quite often I do this and I look at the time and then I put it back down so it isn't even unlocked so does that count? I don't know but we will only find out at the end of this vlog whether I've actually been successful with picking my phone up less and whether I've also had like I guess a reduction in average screen time or something but today I'm thinking I'm thinking not I'm thinking that Today is not going to be even a little bit successful. I will of course total however many, I am still gonna read as much of this as I possibly can, but I'm very sleepy. And I will obviously roll over everything that I don't manage to read or add it to the total, which, oh my God, I've got a, I've got a graphic novel. I just remembered. I just remembered I've got a comic. That is amazing. That is the reason why I saved it and why I told you guys that I wasn't reading it on Tuesday because it's my secret weapon. I love this. I might have to pull that out tomorrow. I might have to read that in between this which I'm still determined to finish tomorrow, even though I'm currently on page 35. So I can't even tell you what it's about or anything. But I think that between this and Lightbringer, I may have to read Laura Olympus volume four. I mean, we'll see how we go because we still have the weekend to go. And actually my pickups for the weekend are a lot less than they are throughout the rest of the week. And typically on an average week, I do tend to read like quite a bit more at the weekend. Is there a correlation there? Potentially. <laughs> Hello, I pretty much lost all of yesterday to a depression hole, but I did manage to get a bit of reading done. I read 174 out of 190 pages, which once again, so close, yet so far, I think my plan is to pop out a comic tomorrow to make up all of these pages that I've missed like throughout the week. But I was also very close to DNFing Unearthed yesterday because it kind of reads like Indiana Jones, but in like a spacey sci-fi setting, which isn't too, it's like, they're trying to solve puzzles to get through this temple, but reading about people solving puzzles isn't interesting. Like if the puzzles were in the book or if it was a game or if it was a movie and I feel if I had a chance to solve the puzzle before they were, then it would be interesting. But just seeing people solve a series of puzzles, like reading about it, just really isn't interesting to me. But there is like an underlying mystery under this that I do want the answer to because this book is following a girl who is trying to salvage alien tech off this planet to sell, to buy out her sister's contract because her little sister's a slave. And the guy is the son of the scientist that originally decoded the message from this like dying alien race. So his father actually found a message within the message that said something really vague like apocalypse or end of days without any clarification and he was thrown into prison I think for treason because he was trying to warn humanity against exploring this further and humanity in general think that this alien Reese's technology is going to save them from like certain death. So he's gone to this planet to try and gain more information about that coded message to prove his father right so that his father's no longer a criminal. And they end up teaming up together and they go to this smaller temple than the rest of the scavengers are going to and they have to solve a series of puzzles, obviously Indiana Jones style, to get to the end message. Now the alien race that belonged to this planet, I guess, that built all of these temples were theoretically extinct before humans even started to evolve and it's that part of it that I'm interested in like I want to know what the what the message is like why is there this cryptic apocalyptic end of days message encoded in the other message what is it that they're trying to lead the humans to what kind of alien race were these people like are they actually extinct what did they look like what was their civilization like and that's kind of why I've decided right now not to DNF I'm like bang on 200 pages into it I think so I've got like 130 left which to be honest isn't much and it's a pretty easy read but the whole like solving puzzle stuff just reading about that 
that constantly was kind of it's kind of dull to me and also I have noticed now if you've read one Amy Kaufman book then you've pretty much read them all and this book has the same kind of characters again that like Illuminate, the Aurora Cycle, this Shattered World has and it's just a little bit tedious after a while like I know that her books are generally a good time and I'm not having a terrible time reading Unearthed but I also I'm pretty confident that it's not gonna push any boundaries of anything that's ever been done before in an Amy Kaufman book. So yeah, that's where I'm up to with that one. My plan now is to finish this, which I only have 60 pages of because the live show is tonight and then I'm gonna get some tidying done, I think maybe, and I'm for sure gonna be getting a workout in as well. So I am about to start setting up for the live show for the Shadow Rising which I did finish a little bit earlier this afternoon and I kind of just wanted a moment to gather my thoughts. I have made a spoiler video on this that I'm not going to film the last clip of until I've done the live show tonight. Had a little bit of time to set on my thoughts, kind of got other perspectives on the book and also just like this book is nearly a thousand pages so what I read at the beginning of this book feels like a million light years away from what I read at the end of this book because I've also been reading this since like the 19th of July so it's been over a two week period just really consistent um, and I kind of just need like a little bit of a, a recap and a, a sit with it but for the purpose of this vlog and telling you guys my thoughts currently I have this at a three star rating and I really wanted to love this because I know it's a lot of people's like not necessarily favorite book in the series but it's one of according to a lot of people one of the best in the series and I think plot wise you are beginning to see the scope of what Robert Jordan has in mind for the Wheel of Time. You're getting some of the like easter eggs coming to fruition, you're seeing the plot work that's been done since book one, you're getting little hints of like what's to come and the just like the scope and the intricacy of the plot in the world in here but this book is just so much longer than it needs to be and the reason why it's so much longer than it needs to be is because Robert Jordan is just repeating himself over and over and over again and it's not even like the things that he's repeating are like plot points that he's heavy-handedly trying to hammer into your brain. It's random anecdotes about men and women and what you should do to your wives and what you should do to your husbands to get them to do what you want. My overwhelming thought through reading this book is I finally, because a lot of people say that Robert Jordan doesn't write Write women well. I mean, arguably he doesn't, but I just don't think he really writes any character of the age that these characters are supposed to be very well. Because my overwhelming feeling when I'm reading this book or when I was reading this book is this feels like I'm in the pub with a lot of old men that keep telling you the same anecdotes over and over and over again. And <laughs> it's a little bit frustrating and I'm getting frustrated because I like the plot. I can see the scope and the intricacy of the plot. I'm intrigued about the vastness of this world and the vastness of this plot and how it's all going to come together but I don't like the writing and it's not even necessarily just the writing style. It is the 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 amount of writing that there is the fact that we have things that aren't necessarily repeated over and over again and I know that people refer to them as like Robert Jordan's like writing quirks and stuff and it's like a well known like even fans of the Wheel of Time big fans of the Wheel of Time acknowledge that these things exist but for me it's like it's it's frustrating to have a story that you want to be invested in hindered by a writing style that feels like it's wading through mud. Like, I believe that Robert Jordan's wife was his editor. I don't know whether she was his editor or his wife first, but I feel like she was being a little bit too kind to him and that this could have been trimmed just, just a little bit, just a couple hundred pages off this. And I do feel like that's true for the majority of, of his books, or the ones that I've read so far anyway. So yeah, very mixed feelings because I want to get to the bottom of this story. I want to get through this story, but it can feel a little painful sometimes and this as I've mentioned I'm sure in this vlog was up and down constantly. The first quarter was very very slow and then the next quarter was really good and I loved it and then the next quarter I felt was really slow and then it perked up slightly about 200 pages from the end and then I feel like it felt flat again. I still don't really love the way that Robert Jordan writes action scenes either so as conflicts were coming to a head at the end um, it wasn't the most compelling thing for me to read so I don't know what I'm going to do about this series because 15 books is a lot to read and I want to be committed. I want to see it through to the end but it's just like how long can I push through for the story when I'm so frustrated by the writing style so I mean at least it's it's done a 970 page book it's been a long time since I've read a book this thick so I'm kind of proud of myself oh it's just so conflicting because having 
read 970 pages of this gives me ample time to be frustrated with the writing style but at the same time having little like plot things come to light and getting excited about that and seeing some like foreshadowing and stuff going on gets me excited but then I'm frustrated and all of my feelings are mixed. Those are my current thoughts. This one doesn't go with my school readathon unfortunately but now I can move on to other stuff on my magical readathon TBR. So at my current point I'm on page like 242 of this so I have 18 ish pages that I need to read today to make it to my page goal but I am hoping to read it. That being said I'm not sure how long this live show is going to be and I did say that I maybe wanted to play Fortnite for a little bit after that so I will check in with you guys. Probably the next point will be when I finish this one which will either be later tonight or tomorrow morning. So I'm bringing you this update quite a bit later in the day than I expected. It's just gone 4pm and I have just finished Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. So I had a pretty chill Saturday and I was looking forward to a really chill Sunday. But I woke up this morning and it was, it was Poomageddon downstairs and it has been a long time since we've woken up to Bree's explosive poops to be fair but giving her the benefit of the doubt but she does have a little bit of an upset tummy today so we've been yeah my whole day was set back and then the upset tummy did not end there so that's where I've been but I have also finally managed to finish this book. I gave it two stars. It was fine. It was like every other Amy Kaufman, Megan Spooner book I've read. Or I say Amy Kaufman book, I know Megan Spooner also wrote this, but the Amy Kaufman, Megan Spooner books are also pretty much the same as the Amy Kaufman, G. Kristoff books, which is why I've been saying like, it's pretty much the same as every Amy Kaufman book I've read. Um, I'm not like neglecting the fact that Megan Spoon is here at all or anything. It does end on a cliffhanger, which is really annoying because I absolutely have no intention of continuing on with this series. But the mystery that I wanted to know the resolution of the thing that actually stopped me from DNF in this is kind of like you get the answer to that in this book, but it opens up a whole ton more questions that I feel like are questions that I had in this book that are only going to be answered in a sequel that I'm not going to be reading. It wasn't the most riveting watching other people or reading about other people solving puzzles. The characters were nothing new compared to every other. Like I knew what was coming in terms of the characters because it's the same as all the other Amy Kaufman books that I've read before and it was it wasn't even a pretty easy read to be fair because I was kind of bored and thinking about DNF in through a lot of it. So at least I fulfilled the prompt and to be honest the Guild level that I'm on for Magical Readathon is one where I can actually count DNFs towards the prompts anyway so I could have DNF this but whatever I finished it it's done. So in terms of the challenge today's page goal I did make I succeeded yesterday and I hit the page goal and today's page goal is 184 pages so I've already read 62 of that and I have 120 two to go so i actually need to work out how much i need to read today to balance out the week overall so in the final stretch of this vlog to hit my page goal for the week i have to get to 1355 pages and according to my calculations with all of the pages that i didn't manage to read in all of the days leading up to today that means that today i have 343 pages to square us off for the week as a whole so for that i am going to be picking up laura olympus volume four which was my secret secret weapon. I, it wasn't so much of a secret as well and pretty much I've told you every day <laughs> that I had this in my back pocket. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to pull it out but page goal like challenges like this can be quite challenging for me because when I feel under pressure to read something and I'm not in the mood to read it then instead of like just pushing through it to get to the page goal I'm actually more likely to not bother so having this as a backup like knowing that I had this if I needed it was probably the only thing that's got me to the end of this challenge if I'm being honest. So this one does fulfill a magical readathon prompt. It is the first one to achieve an ordinary in spells and incantations. It is charm, short trip, and the prompt is to read a manga or comic or graphic novel. So this one is volume four in Laura Olympus series, which is a bind up of a webcomic by Rachel Smith. It's like a modernization of, or like a, it's a retelling of Hades and Persephone, but it brings all of the gods into a modern setting, like Olympus and the 
Wonderworld, etc., are all cities. Poseidon, Zeus, and Hades rule over these three cities, and all of the other gods are in here as well. It's modernized, there's technology, it brings the gods into the 21st century, but keeps them, like, keeps the core characteristics of who they are in myth, while also making them relatable. And I just really like what Rachel Smith has done with this reimagining. The relationship between Hades and Persephone as well is so wholesome, but in terms of the other gods, this comic series does not shy away from some of the like really dark stuff in myth like domestic violence sexual assault and that kind of thing so do be aware of that if you're going into this but my plan now is because it's quarter past four i thought that i would be finished with an earth in the morning and have this done by the afternoon i'm actually going to do some bacon i'm going to try a brookie recipe i don't think i've ever made brownies before but i have gotten better at cookies now like i make cookies pretty frequently so i'm gonna do that i also need to make brie some chicken and rice for dinner because upset tummy and then i need to make us chicken and rice for dinner because we're having a Thai green curry tonight i also would really like to play the sims because i'm in the mood and curtis has um got the sims one on his steam deck right now actually which i'm really excited about so yeah we'll see where the evening takes me but i think because the next time I check in with you, I'm going to be doing a full recap on like how successful this challenge was and whether I managed to stay off my phone and all of that kind of thing. So I think that I'm actually going to be checking in with you tomorrow when I've had time in the morning to process all of that information. But this should at least be done by tonight. <laughs> the sims 2 and you could say that i'm living my best life i'm having a great time welcome to the final chapter of this vlog where we find out whether my dedication to this project this challenge over the last week has affected the amount of times i pick up my phone in a day at all but before that just to round us out i did finish laurel and purse volume 4 by rachel smith i just said i just finished i did finished laura olympus volume 4 i did finish laura olympus volume 4 by rachel smith last night i gave this one four stars it was quite a long one i feel like the others tend to hit around 350 ish pages whereas this one came in at over 400 my preference in the installments in this series very much depend on how much persephone and hades time we get because the thing if i had to criticize this comic series on one thing it would be that because it is a romance series like it's long-winded in terms of the romance like the characters are doing all sorts of things that aren't romantic the characters are not together like it takes a while so like you kind of savor every little kernel like every little frame where they are actually together and depending on how much of that we get depends on whether i rate each volume of this series a four or a five so this one was a four star i do want we had some kind of like progression in the way of that romantic relationship but i feel like i want just like a little bit more you know i want a little bit more involvement and i feel like with the way that hades especially is headed we're gonna get some real good content in potentially volume five but it's just like I said that is kind of my only real criticism of this series but because this is a webcomic because you get a new installment like every two weeks or however frequently these are published like it makes sense the structure of this but when I'm reading it in these massive chunks and then not reading anything for like six months to a year and then reading another massive chunk that's kind of my reaction to what I'm reading. I do understand that it is a webcomic so if you're reading it in real time as it's published then it's a little bit different. Also, if you've noticed this, I really tore off my nail last night. I put my phone on my bedside table and it started to slide off and I went to grab it and kind of punched the front of my side table with the nail and it just like, it's torn off quite low on my nail bed. So I'm going in for a repair tomorrow. But yeah, yesterday wasn't a good day. Quite a few accidents between me and Brie, whose tummy is getting a little bit better. She's not 100% out of the woods yet, but she's on her way. The, um, the explosions are less explodey. 
should we say. This was the fourth book that I finished in this video and there is a couple of reasons why I decided to make this video. The first is that I was generally horrified by how often I'm picking up my phone in a day and I do actually think, do you say it? If you know, does just picking up my phone and looking at the time count? Because that's real upsetting if it does, but also makes a lot more sense why my pickups are so high. But the second reason why I wanted to do this is because I want to push myself to read a lot this month because otherwise what happens, and this happens to me a lot, I'll say that I'm doing something, I'll say I'm gonna read a lot in August, but without actually making a plan or doing something to make me read more in August, I won't go out of my way to read anymore, but somehow expect more books to have been read. So that's one of the, that's the main reason why I did this vlog specifically in August. In terms of my performance over this week as a whole, there is only one day where I actually managed to hit my page goal, and that was on Saturday when I hit it exactly. So not a single day, well actually, that is a lie, yesterday, I went over purely because I read Laura Olympus volume four but I read this purely because I failed so many other days that I had a significant amount of pages that I needed to catch up on. So my best day of the week was yesterday, it was Sunday, I read 478 pages and my worst day of the week was Thursday where I read 102. Now considering I was in the salon for most of the day on Thursday and I didn't read a single page while I was there, that is pretty predictable and going into this week I was tempted to not do this challenge during this week because I knew there was a big chance that I would pretty much lose a day on Thursday. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not the biggest reader. Like I'm not the fastest reader. For me to read a lot, I actually have to put effort into it. So like on a typical day, like 102 pages on a day where I was getting my hair done all day is pretty good for me. Normally I'd say we'd be looking at about 60 pages. So I knew that a lot of these days were going to be a stretch. I knew that 227 pages on a weekday for me were going to be a stretch and that definitely proved to be the case. But I did manage to hit my overall page goal. I read 1,428 pages in total and the amount that we were aiming for overall was 1,355. The daily page average would have been 194 pages a day and once again thanks to Laura Olympus volume 4 I did end up going over that with an average of 204 pages per day. But how did this impact my screen time, the amount of times that I'm picking up my phone? And the answer there is truly not as much as I expected it to. So my pickups were down 12% from last month. I picked up my phone 12% less and my average pickups was reduced but only by 25 per day. I only picked my phone up, this is on average, I only picked my phone up on average 25 times less in a day. Now I have noticed a little bit of a pattern in these two graphs. I don't use my phone very much on Saturdays and I think, I know that I pick up my phone as an anxiety response a lot of times. Like sometimes I just have to have something in my hand and it'll be my phone. So sometimes I will watch television and my phone will be in my hand and the screen will be unlocked and I will be scrolling but not even looking at my phone. And that is kind of, I need a fidget spinner or <laughs> something to put in my hand so that I'm not doing that. But on Saturdays where I'm occupied with things that I want to do, I'm doing activities that I'm genuinely interested in, not things I need to do like I need to edit this vlog, I need to edit this video. And while I enjoy what I do, I enjoy making videos, having to do them takes a little bit of an element of choice out of that because I'm not choosing to edit a vlog on Tuesday. I need to edit a vlog on Tuesday, if you know what I mean. So it seems that when I'm doing things I want to do when it's the weekend, I pick up my phone a lot less. So not too much of a drastic result, I would say, in terms of the amount of times that I'm picking up my phone. But we have had a little bit more of a drastic result when we look at the just general screen time. So the week prior to the week that we've just done, so the week that we were getting this information from, the week essentially that goes between the 24th and the 31st of July, I had an average screen time of 5 hours and 27 minutes and I know, yeah actually this shows, I know that I spent a lot of time playing Candy Crush in that week because I was in like a depressy procrastination hole and 9 hours of the time in that week was spent on Candy Crush. So just me not playing as much Candy Crush in the week that's just passed definitely helped to reduce my screen time, but my screen time for last week was 35% less than it was the week before, which is pretty much a two hour per day decrease 
in the amount of time that I have spent staring at a screen. So this is something that makes sense, but I didn't know that that was going to be the result from this challenge. Because obviously it makes sense if I'm spending more time reading, if I'm trying to pick up my phone less, if I have to read so many pages, then the amount of time I am able to spend looking at my phone is obviously going to be decreased. But my actual goal in this was to pick up my phone less. And decreasing my screen time is a positive result, just not the one that I anticipated. I guess my overall thoughts on this challenge, like would I do it again? Yes, but I feel like the amount of times that I pick up my phone is like more of an anxiety habitual thing that I need to work on. Not necessarily the fact that I'm spending so much time on my phone because I can still pick up my phone nearly 200 times a day yet not spend nearly as much time on it when the amount of pickups is only like slightly reduced. So I guess I would recommend this challenge to people who are trying to reduce their screen time but their screen time intimidates them because if I had to do five and a half hours of reading time a day if I'd have chosen to do the screen time challenge and I'd have done five and a half hours of reading a day it just wasn't it's just not possible that's just too much but what I've done is essentially achieved the same outcome as a screen time vlog with a slightly less intimidating number. So yeah, I mean, this has been good for me because I've read a ton. I'm four books down for the month already, three of which are magical readathon books, and I have also broken my Candy Crush addiction, which is great. Now I just need to not play The Sims 2, which I think is going to be a little bit harder because I'm thinking about it right now. Let me know down in the comments whether you enjoyed it and if you potentially want me to do it in the future because as I mentioned there is potential for me to repeat this experiment. There is also the option of me doing just like the classic I swap my screen time for reading time to see how that plays out and maybe if it plays out any differently to how this one did. But that is about it for this week's vlog. So next week, I'm still gonna be cracking on with the Magical Readathon, but it is also the final book support group, which is a readathon that's hosted by Steph from Steph Loves, where we focus on reading sequels and like final books in series. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna finally be picking up Lightbringer and I'm aiming to finish it in that vlog as well. And also catching up on a few other sequels on my TBR. So do stay tuned if you are at all interested. But aside from that, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you made it this far because it is as always a long one and aside from that please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go when nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no